I recently heard that one of the European countries wants to substitute the term women for people who menstruate at the legislative level. This term was first used by the author of Harry Potter. Could you please explain what all this means from a magical point of view? Joanne Rowling was certainly trolling them, but they didn't have the wit to appreciate it. Someone, however, appreciated the humor. In any case, what is happening now with this issue is completely ridiculous. Before the agony of the Abrahamic system, knowledgeable people began to say, Guys, we are transitioning to a new operating system, and we have to change old paradigms somehow. We have to get rid of the unjust patriarchal system as it was before, starting with the Romans, where a woman was a part of the property. Because when the transition takes place, you won't enter the new world with that paradigm. You won't be able to do that. They began to explain that the ideal system does not include the divisions of gender, caste, or any of the other distinctions that exist in this world. That the ideal magical system speaks of androgynous consciousness. It speaks about individualism, not collectivism. But when all of this has fallen into the unstable, Abrahamic brain, which always perceives everything in a distorted way, we get the effect that we are seeing now. People deny gender, that is, they deny the obvious. Knowledgeable people spoke of androgyny of consciousness, not of bodies. But this has been completely misunderstood and misinterpreted. People extrapolated exactly to the physical plane, when of course it was all about the spiritual plane. And this complete nonsense about gender reassignment, about taking drugs that delay gender development, about surgeries, about people who menstruate, and everything related to gender rejection. These are just attempts to develop algorithms that will be mandatory in the new system. But they don't take into account the fact that all of these principles should be applied to the mind and not to the body. The knowledgeable ones were supposed to prepare people by saying, soon, there may be beings who have, for example, for genders at the same time. Maybe some alien species like that will come and live among us. How will you interact with them? How will you behave toward them? Somehow people will have to accept that this is also normal. But it is not normal for you, because nature has created you as a man or a woman, a certain biological species. You cannot develop for genders at the same time, but you can have an understanding and feeling of what it is like. But what is happening today is grotesque. It is surrealism. It is just a misunderstood set of attitudes. 
Those in the know said, how can you live next to elves, dwarves, swergs, and trolls if you're afraid of them and don't understand them? You do not have to become a troll or a zwerg. You cannot become what you are not. Nature made you human, so at least learn to be human. A human is one who is able to recognize, understand, and describe everything. And even to feel many things. If he has no limitation of description and perception. Of course, this misunderstanding cannot last long. You know, at the beginning of its existence the Soviet Republic carried out many experiments similar to today's. For example, the experiment of permissiveness. They took infants and didn't educate them, they let things drift and let them run wild. They watched them develop in their natural environment without the slightest restriction. These little creatures quickly turned into animals that eat their own feces and smear it on their neighbors' faces. Because animal nature is animal nature, What's happening now is the same kind of experiment. If everything is allowed, what will people do? Will they be able to preserve themselves, the essence of humanity, and not allow it to be replaced by other people's ideas? fashions and substitutions of terms, like replacing the term women with people who menstruate. I'm even embarrassed and afraid to ask how they plan to replace the term men. It is a very cruel, vicious social experiment. Over the last 20 years, a very good word has emerged to define this experiment, trolling. And very few people realize that it is trolling and take it at face value, mostly out of ignorance. Like those children who didn't know the rules of behavior and acted the way their animal nature told them to. Because if you don't pass on the traditional rules of behavior in a human community, people will start to engage in this kind of mildly idiotic behavior. And what does all of this mean from a magical point of view, this means natural selection. Introduction to a series of experiments and observations to see how man will behave in these experiments, whether he will remain human. For example, a person actively supports the LGBT community and says that everyone is free to be who they want to be. But suddenly he gets a terrible disease that is only transmitted through same-sex partners. Let's see how long it takes before this person who has supported the LGBT community starts tearing that community to shreds. Will he stay faithful to his convictions? Or will he put himself first, not wanting to die, get sick and inject himself with another vaccine? Let's see, this is actually a very interesting experiment, and this is not the first time in our lives that terms have been substituted. As soon as there is a paradigm shift, the substitution of words begins immediately. Orwell described it very colorfully in his iconic book. And it's not just fiction, it's our experience. So many people are now showing their true faces, how human they really are. Maybe they're not human. Maybe they're the kind of animals who, left to their own devices, will eat their own feces. 
and that's what these experiments are for. Magical systems observe each person and record their results and behavior. Not just each individual, but the entire human community, and give this civilization, the Abrahamic civilization a grade. What are the achievements of this civilization? What did they accomplish by killing the old gods, enslaving the people, and forcing them to voluntarily call themselves servants? Did it accomplish anything? Except to develop a very masterfully honed algorithm for betraying one's past beliefs, attitudes, friends, dreams, loved ones, anyone. People have mastered the art of betrayal. But maybe there are those who can resist it. After all, magic isn't just about sorcery, it's about world-building. In order to understand who will enter which reality when the operating system changes, we must evaluate each person individually and humanity as a whole. The gods who rule now will be judged according to the judgment of humanity, but human beings will also be judged. Isn't this the terrible final judgment that the Bible has been telling us about for so long?